My name is uh, Orville Schell, and with John Delory, we've written Wealth and Power, China's Long March to the 21st Century. We were motivated uh, to write this book uh, to try and explain how it came to pass that after so many decades of dead ends, failed reforms, uh, broken revolutions, and this search for a restoration of China's greatness, that finally, uh, even after 1989, China came to experience this, this rather extraordinary period of economic dynamism. Well, in trying to figure out a way to sort of historically explain China's present and its period of sort of the economic boom, we thought it would be really uh, helpful to look at a whole series of iconic figures and write sort of essayistic uh, profiles of them and asking the question, you know, what was it that they all were after, that they shared in common, that finally did culminate in some way and did finally allow China to sort of uh, you know, spring back to life in a way that had been the dream of these people for over a century. We chronicle 11 people in this book, people like Feng Guifun, the self-strengthener, Zi Xi, the Emperor Dao, Empress Dowager, Liang Qichao, the great sort of reformer at the turn of the last century, Sun Yat-sen, Chen Doxiu, who, who was a May 4th movement sort of uh, activist and then founded the Communist Party, Chiang Kai-shek, Mao Zedong, uh, Deng Xiaoping, Zhu Rongji, and then finally Liu Xiaobo. And you may ask, why him? Well, I think what's interesting about him is that he represents a tradition of democratic thinking in China, which, while prominent, was not the main current flowing through history uh, of the 20th century. Uh, we would, I think, both John Delury and I characterize the main current that we found flowing through uh, those decades was this quest for wealth and power, Fu Chang, uh, this age-old sort of uh, adage, and that really what lay behind that was a, qu a quest for China to rejuvenate itself so that it could be respected. Now, if you look at the sort of end game of where China is today, you see much that they've accomplished, quite impressive. But what still is missing is respect. And so that is the kind of surprising missing ingredient. Having attained considerable wealth and power, uh, Chinese now find that there's this other element which lies at the heart of soft power. And uh, why isn't it there? How do they get it? What's missing? And I think finally uh, one could say that to be deserving of respect as a great power, a truly great power. You know, your government has to also respect its people and earn the respect of their people. It isn't simply a question of earning a respect of the outside world, which in many ways was the focus of, of, of China's struggle over the last century.